a broken finger, so I'm going to throw that out there. I don't know what's going on in my world lately, but I feel this very strong need to bring something to completion that I don't know why I haven't opened up about it until now. I feel very strongly that I need to. So today, if you are here with me, I'm not going to be pulling tarot. Um, I'm going to share my personal story that involves the tarot and the beauty of spiritual magic and physical reality. So to keep a very long story short, I began opening up psychically around my Saturn return. I eventually learned a couple years later when it really kicked off from my mother that this is something that has existed in my family line. I don't, I don't know. We're Native American. I guess the medicine was usually passed on from the males, the medicine men to other medicine men, but I do know the medicine was passed on to, I believe, my grandmother. Um, I don't know if that means anything or not, but I started working with the tarot about two years after I started opening up psychically. And as soon as I did, I started to acknowledge that I was having this visitation from this spirit. And I've been visited by this spirit throughout my life. Um, in times where I really needed his help, he would appear before me and assist me. So I always sort of viewed him as an imaginary kind of spirit guide because I didn't really believe in psychic phenomena and things like that until it all just sort of happened to me. And um, anyway, I started working with the tarot and the spirit was around me and he loved, he loved the word grace and he had died 25 years ago when this all started. And as I opened up to the possibility of him being real, also other people I was speaking to through the veil, like, you know, if I was doing a reading for a client, it would be their grandma. And I was blown away seeing that it was real because I was reading for other people. And I could say, oh my gosh, I don't even know this person's grandma. I've never heard of that medication. You know, how do I know that grandma loves to bake bread or was on this med or whatever, right? So it started to all become real, not just this spirit. And the spirit was very funny and very loving and it, it became, he became what I called my ghost friend. Okay. And as it continued, I realized that there was something karmic between the spirit and myself, right? It wasn't just, oh, fun ghost friend. There was something that I wasn't seeing in it. And this whole mystery sorted, uh, sort of started to unfold. And very long story short, I realized he was stuck where he died. And that was very hard for me to even come to that conclusion because I didn't know that could happen, right? I didn't even believe in this kind of stuff until it was just happening around me. So I believed I was going crazy. I thought I was going schizophrenic, becoming schizophrenic. I went to psychologists and they told me I was not, that I was completely sane, that I was making a living that way and that it was just a gift. And it was a mystical experience. And I'm very grateful that I had those psychologists. So I ended up um, being guided by life, right? I, I, I needed to help his spirit where he was stuck. And he was very clear about where to go and he was stuck and I did witness, believe it or not, him becoming freed from where he was. I, I think his death was very sudden and traumatic and maybe that had something to do with it. And then life led me on this whole journey where I ended up meeting a living man who was 25 years old. Now the spirit loved the word grace, right? I ended up meeting a man named Gray, 
who was 25 years old. The spirit died 25 years ago. And this man knew my name, knew all the inside jokes I had with the spirit, right? He was, he was the spirit and he was alive, actually younger than me. And I discovered that that spirit had been reborn. And this man named Gray was actually schizophrenic and in a state of psychosis. And yet I could communicate with him so completely because I had been telepathically communicating with him for two years before I had met him, right? And so it was a bit like a haunting, but it was someone who was alive. And his soul being stuck where he had passed was essentially like fragmented, right? So him in this current reality, his, this current timeline and lifetime, it's like he's not fully present, not fully integrated, not fully whole in here because it was a spiritual crisis. So I acknowledge that psychosis and schizophrenia can be genetic. I acknowledge that it can be um, physiological. Is that the right term? I acknowledge all of those things, but I also acknowledge that it can absolutely be a spiritual crisis, and I think it can be all of these things simultaneously, okay? So it's all of it. I noticed around my friend, he was telling me he was schizophrenic. Everywhere we would go, he would sort of speak outside of his body. I, I said he was kind of magical, like if you've ever seen the movie Powder, and you know, if we were staying somewhere outside, the billboard would be like, have schizoaffective disorder. You know, if we were going to the beach, the pier would be spray painted, I'm schizophrenic. You know, he left a lot of very, um, they weren't really hints so much as like very blatant, hey, this is what this is, right? Because I was there for very strange, supernatural, spiritual reasons, but he was also showing me, you know, this is very like a very 3D, uh, thing here. You know what I mean? So I went ahead and helped him get on medication. And when I, I was very hesitant, I just wasn't sure about any of it at this point. Right. But when we went in, the doctor's name was Grace and I just knew it was meant to be. And he got on an antipsychotic and I, I witnessed him start to come back and become himself not that previous identity from the previous lifetime because he honestly came in more as that figure with memories from that timeline than his current reality and his current one. So it was fascinating to witness. I still deeply love him. I was in love with him before I met him and I still am. And I haven't spoken to him for a very long time. A life circumstance happened and I was forced to be removed from him. And he didn't have support in his life that acknowledged his mental illness and his need for both modalities of healing, spiritual and medicinal. And so my beloved friend is lost in psychosis and he's actually in a state of catatonia, which is extremely, it's almost unbearable to witness. And so I'm here today to finally not keep him a secret, first of all, to share my story a bit. And I guess to kind of have this big confessional, or I feel like I'm coming out of the closet or coming clean by talking about him and my experience. And I'm also here asking for help and love for him. If you all watching this today, this is right around the um, solar eclipse in, on October 2nd of 2024. But if, if you happen to see this, if you would just light a candle for me and for Gray, for my, for my friend, for a soul that I love, 
beyond words. It would mean so much to me to say a little prayer for him, speak words of love to him, and just light a little guiding light and a candle to help guide him home to us, to life. I think I'm gonna end this video here. Gray, if you ever see this someday, I just wanna say thank you and I love you. And with that, I will um, go light a beautiful pumpkin spice candle because it is the fall. And I will leave you guys here. Thank you so much for being here with me for my big confessional. And um, I will be coming out with uh, new videos on my channel soon for the rest of the readings for October and all that jazz. But yeah, thank you all. I love you so much. Okay. got my candle lit. I hope you all join me. I really appreciate it if you do. Shout out to, I think, TJ Maxx for this really awesome scent. I highly recommend it, everyone, if you're into that kind of thing. Okay. <laughs> all right. Bye.